Hey, what's up guys? It's Joshua, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Redshift Curvature node to add a little bit more realism to your renders. So what it does is it creates a little mask on the edges, and you can do that. And uh, once you get the mask, you can create a material or a bump map and make the edges stand out a little bit more. And then you can also feather the edges of the mask and create dust-like appearance, and it makes it just look a little bit better than if you just had a diffuse thing. So... I'm going to break down the scene and uh, we'll start from there. So first I have the floating tires. We do not need those. So I'm going to turn those off in both the render view and the display. Uh, I have a camera in the scene and then I also have a redshift camera node onto it. So if you right click on your camera, put a redshift and redshift camera. And on this, I have a bokeh, which is like the depth of field. I'm going to turn that off because there is no tires in the background. And then I also have exposure ticked on. If you don't have it ticked on, it's not too bad. And it's not too important, but I just find if you override and then enabled, you can play with the ISO or F stop or shutter speed and make your scene to the exposure you want. And then I also have a backdrop, which is just a simple spline and a extrude node. And then I have a dome light. So if you come up to redshift, lights, dome light. Uh, puts one in the scene and this is just right out of the plug in there you don't actually have to change anything I just kept it at the white there's no photo this is because the tire is very diffuse and doesn't have many reflections and uh, the metal wasn't what I was focusing on it's more of the rubber tire so and then I have my tire split up into two parts here so I'm gonna briefly go over the metal and then uh, we'll go into the actual tire so it's, I grabbed a texture and if you actually go online, I'll have this uh, website in the description. This guy has made about 49 or 52 or yeah, 52 uh, textures of like imperfection, scratches, thumbprints, and it's a really great uh, website and you can download the sample and that's the one I'm currently using. It's got five free uh, textures that you can use and uh, use them in your rendering. So if I go back to Cinema 4D, the texture I was using is the scratching. So if I go over here, if you put that in, you won't see anything. So you have to use a RS uh, triplanar. So if you come up, type in triplanar, plug it down, and I'm going to plug this into the output. And what this does is it makes like a UV map kind of, but it projects it from each side. So it projects it from the X, the Y, and the Z. So from here you can change the scale. And when you change the scale, it kind of changes how many almost tilings it has. So I kept it small because I wanted the scratches to be somewhat visible. And then I have a ramp. So you plug the ramp in and the ramp is just to change the exposure so it's like if you want more of that and then you can cut this down so you just have like a few of them showing it's like that but you'll see how that's a bit more important later on and then uh, I plug that into the reflection roughness and uh, change it preset to iron and then fooled around with the weight the bump map you could just grab a bump map from up here plug it into the tri player and then bump input and then you plug that in like that very simple and the reason you have the ramp is then you can change the white and that will show like how many how much of the reflective you want if you have it way over here it's going to be like perfectly reflective but of course you bring it There'll be more roughness on it and it won't be as reflective. Alright, so let me reset that. So there's that. And then we're gonna exit out. And then we're gonna create a whole new material for the tire. So I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna turn off the middle. We just want the tire. And then I'm gonna come up to redshift. Material, material, material. I don't know why it's called that, but I'm going to change this to tire material. Drop that onto the tire. Double click. 
And uh, here's the RS material. So right off the bat, I know that Tyre has the darker color, so I'm just gonna bring down to about vibrance to like 10. And you can see it's really reflective. Tires aren't reflective at all. So if you bring that down to zero, or you can bring it up a little bit and then increase the roughness. So it's just a blank tire. You can go all the way down, but I find you need a lot of global illumination or any kind of things to actually see what's happening. But, and then from there, we kind of have our just our regular diffused tire. So what I want to drop down is a texture. Tri planer. Oh yeah, we'll start with that. So I'm gonna plug the texture into the texture, and then texture X, click on it. Then I'm gonna find the materials. My favorite one is uh, 36 scratches, smudges, and fingerprints. Let's open. No. Plug that into the surface. And now you'll see what the scratches look like. So this scratches is just gonna be the overall scratches for it. So I'm gonna change the size a little bit. Maybe 0 0.05. Actually, that's a bit too much. Two. Alright. With that, I wanna create a bump map. And this is just going to be an overall bump for the tires here. Texture input. Plug that into overall. Overall bump. And put that there. Move that over. So now you can see there's a few lines in here that are coming up. So first of all, you want to have them at negative. I'm gonna do negative 0.5 and if they're too big all you have to do is just come up to tri planner and then increase this to say 4 0.04 okay. the next thing we want is the actual curvature so we're gonna grab the curvature plug that right into The output so we can see what we're doing and for this I'm gonna do the fine edges first so what I like to do is I always like to put it down to 0.1 and then increase the min until we get rid of all those like gray areas so you can see here there's a few gray areas so if you increase this it'll get rid of it but if you increase it too much it'll make these lines very thin so you don't want to increase it too much just enough to kind of get rid of the majority of the gray all right. So essentially what we're doing is if we grab a material blender, we'll call this main fuse. Hold down control and drag it down so it copies. I'm gonna call this edge wear. I'm gonna click on it change the color to like a green just so we can see it so I'm gonna plug the first material into the bump base color I'm gonna plug the second material into their layer one and I'm gonna plug this into the surface nothing's gonna happen it's just gonna have the first material but what we can do now is if we put the curvature into the layer one blend color it's gonna create a mask so wherever this or wherever the curvature is then uh, the material will show it. So you can see here that we have the green. And the best way to do it, I find, is do it very subtle. You don't wanna go too high like this, I think is too high. But it's like you wanna keep it the same color or a little bit lighter and then just drop it down. But as you can see though, it's on like every line and if you like that you can keep that but there's a way to make it so it's not on every line so if you type in noise drop down a noise and then you do color composite drop that down and I also want to ramp 
So I'm going to plug the noise into the output so you can see what it is. And on the noise, I'm going to increase this to like say 20. That's too high. I'm going to put this into the ramp first. And then plug the ramp in. And then uh, bring the black up. Let's put on. This is just so you can see a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is combine these two masks. So whatever white is where the curvature is going to be. So the way we do that is if we plug in color composite into it, put the curvature into the base, and then do the ramp and the noise into the blend. To be so precise about this, drop it in like that. And then the base color, we change it to multiply. And now you can see wherever the noise is white, that is where we see the fine edges here. So this is quite a lot, but what you can do is if you go to the noise, you can increase the size. So let's do 0.9. So we'll have more because the noise is smaller. If you drop it to 0.2, we'll have less but bigger ones. Because the noise is uh, bigger, like the white spots are here and the dark spots are here. They're bigger and there's less of them. But you gotta find that happy medium. And you can also increase the ramp. So say if you don't want as much, or if you want more, you can increase this. So with curvatures and ramps and noise, you can do a lot of things. So let's say that's good for now. And then I'm gonna plug this into the output. And then put that, the color composite, the one we just created into that. Now if we change it back to green so we can see it. You can see it's not on every line, it's just kind of spread it over. So that really helps with uh, making it not look so perfect and every line has an edge. Let's see. Make the noise a little bit smaller. We have a bit more of it. Yeah. That looks good. Alright, so let's drop that down. Oops. Try to make that a little bit bigger so we can see it. And then the other thing too is you could put the bump map into the where. So there, so plug that in. Now we just have that a little bit more. And then for the dust, it's essentially the same thing. So if you hold control, go up. I'm gonna plug this one right into the output. And uh, put this down to zero. You want to increase this a little bit. So you can see how it's like feathering the edges. If you go too high, it'll just be really feathered. So I like halfway up. And then you can increase this, kind of get rid of some underwater areas. And then if you want to make it more white, you can use this. Or you can create a ramp. Drop that down a little bit more. Then we want to do the same thing. So copy the material, put the bump map, bump map into it. All this dust. Change it to yellow so we can show you what it looks like. Plug that in to layer two, layer two color. And then you can see the new curvature we created which is this one, plug that into, oh, these lines are so small, layer two, color, and then plug the thing into the surface. Now you can see that the yellow is visible there. The other thing is you want to change these to additive, so you can see everything. All right, and uh, this yellow, 
I'm gonna add some noise to it again. So if you create, highlight both of those, hold control, bring them up. Actually, I'm gonna bring this one up too. Let's create a little bit more room here. This goes, one color goes into the new noise we just copied. Curvature goes into base color. And then color composite goes into the blend. And then the full around with the noise. Let's see point one. I like that. Well, so the ramp, you can decrease that and increase the white so the whites a little bit more. But it takes a lot of fooling around with the ramps and the, the size of the noise. But once you get it going, then we're going to come to the dust and we're going to create like a bit of a dust material here. In between the orange and the yellow, it takes a little bit of time to find it. That's right. You can see mine's very pixelated. This because uh, my samples are quite low, but you can increase your samples at the end and make this look a lot better. But there you go. You can see the fine edges here that we created with the bump map, or we created with the curvature. Find the edges, and then there's a bit of the dust there. If we turn back on the middle, quite bright, but you can change that. And yeah, that's pretty much how you use the curvature node to create some imperfections. There's a bunch of ways you can do this. This is just an easy way to use the curvature node and it is quite powerful. So if you do use it, you can do a lot with it and make it stand out for those imperfections. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, if you did, please subscribe because I'll be making more Redshift tutorials. And yeah, thanks for watching.